Okay. Thank Recording you. Recording has begun. All right. Great. Um, so uh, welcome everyone to the February 27th, 2023 Design Review Board meeting. My name is Eric Zikos, and I'm the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. Calling this meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022 and extended again by the state legislature on July 16, 2022, this design review board meeting will be conducted via remote means using the Zoom platform. The Zoom meeting link is available on the meeting agenda posted on the town's website calendar listing for this meeting uh, or go to the design review board webpage and click on the most recent agenda which lists the zoom link at the top of the page no in-person attendance of the public is permitted however every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the meeting in real time via technological means in the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship or despite best efforts we will post an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the town of amherst website board meeting board members i will take a roll call when i call your name unmute yourself answer affirmatively and please return to mute and um if i could ask that catherine uh be let in um tom long present rebecca lockwood present lindsay schnarr present eric zikos is here and catherine porter i'm is here the, can you hear me <laughs> We can hear you, Catherine. Welcome. I can't see me. I can't see me. I can't check in. Uh, I have no uh, uh, video. Okay, well, we'll handle that on the side. We've got you for now. I'm going to put you on mute. Okay. Erica, you're on mute. You put yourself on mute. I did. I did. <laughs> All right. Um, if technological issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily and fix the problem uh, and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand feature um, to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during the general comment period. Public comment should also be heard at other could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when the public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, Please indicate that you wish to make comments by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when you're finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the board chair. If a, if a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. On tonight's agenda, uh, we have the following. Uh, DRB FY 2023 number 14, Sinorama, Anna, Adam Nixa will be here. Uh, FY 23 item 15, Ray Berry for White Lion Brewing Company, and FY 23 16, The Spoke Live. We will uh, then move on to approval of meeting minutes then general public comment period, and then other business, which will include um, a conversation about scheduling re regular monthly meeting dates and any unanticipated um, meeting items. So let's begin with uh, item 14, Adam Nixa from Sinorama should be in the audience tonight. I have just allowed Adam to speak. Great. Adam, welcome. If you could um, introduce yourself, and um, I am happy to screen share if you would like that. Uh, if you would prefer that, just let me know. And if not, then you can share your screen. 
All right, not a problem. I'm Adam from Sinorama here in Springfield, Massachusetts, on behalf of Amherst Market, of which we're looking to just simply reface the existing light boxes that there are on the building, two of them, uh, of which will be identical, and uh, of which I don't know if you have or have seen uh, the layout of both itself, uh, which is, like I said, the same there, and just looking for your feedback and ultimately uh, approval on that of the existing signage uh, or an annual review and approval of such signage there. And if any, certainly comment, feedback, concern otherwise, uh, certainly welcome. Great, thanks Adam. Um, I just wanna confirm that everyone can see my screen. I'm, I'm sharing um, Amherst Market's proposed signage. Can we, somebody give me a thumbs up on that? Great. Um, Okay, so we're talking about uh, two signs, one on the front of the building, one on the side. On the side, the signs themselves are identical, and you're just replacing what's there. Correct. The uh, other signage that's there is uh, currently quite uh, dilapidated compared to that uh, picture that you have there. Uh, compared to the street view, that's what's there. But otherwise, if you <laughs> see the actual, it's uh, quite uh, dilapidated compared to that. So this is going to be a clean refresh in comparison to what's there. Okay. Um, so uh, board members, any uh, comments? I'm happy to hear them if you wanna unmute or put your hand up. Catherine? <laughs> Catherine, you wanna unmute so we can hear you? All right, okay. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I think they're fine. And um, I do, you're, you're saying there is not a, a sign on the side of the building now, is that, but you're putting one on the side? No, it, they both currently exist where okay. they are. All right, yeah, okay. Well, I have no problem personally okay. with them. What more I have a problem with with so much stickers on signs on the windows, but that's Chris's problem, not mine. Yeah, I have no problem. All right, thanks, Catherine. And I see Tom, you have your hand up. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't have any particular comments. I, I would, um, the graphic designer in me wants to see a little bit more white space around the edge here. I feel like your, sure. um, your Coca-Cola sign and your um, Amherst text is a little tight on that edge, just from an aesthetic perspective. I would not, not approve it because of that, but I would encourage you to throw some extra white space around there and make the graphic designers of the world a little bit happier. Thank you. <laughs> no problem doing so. And Lindsay or Becky, any thoughts to share? Becky's shaking her head. Oh, it looks great. It looks better than it did. It's nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay? Yeah, I, I would agree. Great. Um, I likewise am in approval, although I appreciate Tom's comment. Who <laughs> so, wonder if um, we have any further discussion? Or we can move this one right along. I move that we accept the signs as presented tonight. Tom, do you want to incorporate that request for a little bit additional white space? Uh, I would like to incorporate that as a recommendation, okay. but not a requirement. And right. I would I would second that motion with the recommendation included. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Put a little okay. white. Third. Any, <laughs> third, great. Any discussion? No. Uh, okay. Um, all those in favor of uh, approving uh, this sign with our recommendation for some additional white space. Um, please raise your hands. Oh, Catherine, we can't see you. Say aye. I know. I'm sorry. I raised my hand. I stuck a little yellow hand up there. It's but... Got it. Okay, thanks. Okay, so approved unanimously. Um, thank you, Mr. Nixon, for coming. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. And may I ask who seconded the, um, the motion? Tom did. Tom, Tom seconded. Thanks. Tom. All right. Um, uh, the next uh, item for discussion is White Lion Brewing. Um, perhaps Mr. Barry is here. 
or somebody else from White Lion in the audience? Ray Berry is here. Great. OK, I had to allow and them to speak, and I couldn't do that in the last screen. So I think they both have uh, Ray and Harry Auerbach uh, are yes. both here, and they're both um, from White Lion. And they Great. can both now speak. OK, fantastic. Hi, welcome. Um, I'm Erica Zico, uh, chair of the board. And um, I am happy to screen share on your behalf, or you can share your materials. Which would you prefer? Uh, Ray, um, I, this is Harry with Agnoli Sign, and uh, I, I think screen sharing, if I may suggest, might be beneficial to all of us. Okay. I would agree. Thank you, Harry. Yes, of course, Ray. So I just want to thank everyone on the committee for uh, allowing us an opportunity to share what we're looking to accomplish at 24 North Pleasant. White Lion is an existing brewery in downtown Springfield, and we're looking to reactivate space that was formerly known as High Horse. Mm -hmm. We'll be occupying approximately 5,600 square feet of that first floor dwelling. And we've been able to partner with Harry and Agnoli Sign to present to you today what we believe is a great optic for downtown and the general consumer foot and vehicle traffic. White Lion was built on its branding. And uh, so we're very excited to share what we have today. I will defer a lot of the Q&A and the presentation of the existing uh, application uh, to Harry. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate the uh, intro introduction. And um, if I may request, there's actually, um, I'd like to start with the sign on the first floor. Um, I don't, uh, um, there we go. Okay. So uh, this is a sign um, that, as you can see, is is spanning the, the entrance, if you will. There is a, a metal uh, facade that it, it will be applied to. This is a illuminated sign um, that, you know, black cabinet, black background, uh, the white line um, text, if you will, is in blue and uh, their signature a lion's tail in white. So this is an illuminated cabinet um, that is will greet uh, the people entering through the entranceway. And you can see behind this cabinet is uh, on the second surface. Thank you. Yes. On the second surface of the windows uh, is a uh, graphics, uh, vinyl graphics on, on the window themselves. So uh, this is the primary entrance into uh, White Lion Brewery. Uh, in the past, it was actually to the right, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will certainly entertain questions at this time. And if not, uh, we can um, move on to the next, uh, to the upper level. And yeah, why don't um, we see the please. comprehensive package and then we can jump in? Certainly, with certainly. So what we're proposing on the second level is um, a, it's actually a banner that is on springs and the springs are covered with a, a molding, if you will, a, an aluminum molding so that hides the springs and it is more aesthetically, uh, you know, pleasing, if you will. It's just not these springs that are out there. And we use, we've actually used this in two Cooley Dickinson applications, one at 30 Locust Street in Northampton and one in uh, Waitley or West, West Hatfield, I'm sorry. Um, and because they're stretched uh, these banners last for a much longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And then again, it, um, we're look, we, we are proposing and Ray has, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Uh, Thank so you for this, providing the example. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and if you scroll down to the next picture, you can, um, you can see how it, it is, it is held in place. And then obviously for aesthetic reasons, we, we cover them. So these banners, uh, are typically last for a longer period of time because they're nicely mm -hmm. stretched and that, you know, uh, against uh, the wall and so on, or hitting the wall. So um, we're proposing that uh, just as another way to uh, gain attention to White Lion. Thank you. There we go, White Lion. Um, and you know, should Ray want to, you know, in the future, change uh, the message, if you will, 
it allows flexibility. Obviously, we'd have to go before the we know we have to go before the DRB, but uh, it allows some some flexibility and at a very uh, inexpensive you know inexpensive way of changing it out. So um, you know that those are the two signs that, that we're requesting review by the DRB today. Okay, thank you. Of course. Thank you. Um, so let's open for discussion. Um, Lindsay, do you want to kick us off? Do you have any thoughts? Uh, I do. Um, I see other people's hands raised, but I'm happy to jump in. Um, so if we go to the first entrance view. Let's see if I can remember the order of operations here. Nope. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Somehow I opened that in its own window. Bear with me. There we go. There we go. So I think this is very lovely and appealing visually. Um, is the is the glass frosted or is there a um, laminate that covers the entire glass area or is it just transparent and then there's the white of the lion face and lettering? Um, Ray, I don't know if you want to... If Know, chime in but uh, it, it is it is right now uh, proposed to be frosted if you will it's 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 a print that would cover um, mm -hmm. all those little you know uh, soffit sign soffit glass if you will above the uh, the actual lion and the door and um, uh, the the right window and you know being that the door pulls out you, you know it's it's not like you would be going in and hitting somebody so you you well, people will enter by pulling the door open so they you know in terms of access or any issues about uh hitting people that that won't be an issue so from the outside from the inside looking out is it is it possible to see through enough to be able to see people coming in uh yeah. no um i mean it would depend on on the 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 type of vinyl being used but it's it's, it's what we call a dusted vinyl so it it the, it, it's more opaque than uh, what we would call a see-through. Um, see-through has a perforation that allows light in and out. But, but, but they're in this particular format, it, it, is, it is a frosted, opaque um, type of vinyl applied to the interior window, interior side of the window. Okay, so, so there is... To I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lindsay. To to add to add to that, uh, Harry uh, TSM Design, which is one of our design companies, has mentioned a alternate um, optic where it would afford the customer, consumer, visitor from the inside the ability to look out into the streetscape um, and be able to see exactly what may be transpiring on the porch or deck area. The to Harry's point, the what was offered today is the alternative to that. So there is um, some bandwidth and play in how that presentation would uh, finally settle. And we would obviously take into account any and all recommendations that you have on your end to make it conform with your comfort level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I'm sure I share concerns with others that for somebody who's leaving the building, um, not being able to see if someone else is trying to come in is is probably some kind of hazard. Um, so I do think having uh, transparency on, ideally on both sides of that door would be beneficial and in terms of safety. Um, but otherwise, I think it, you know, I think it looks really nice. Um I don't, I think overall the signage is lovely and, and I think it, it looks really clean. I think it's just a question of, of transparency. And I would, I would encourage you to lean towards something that's more transparent, more translucent um, so that, so that people can see through that door. Um, so that, that's my comment on this one. And then I do have comments on the other. Does anybody else have comments on on this particular installation while we're here, Tom? Is that... Yeah, thanks. I, I do. I'm a, my comment, I guess, is is similar. I'm actually not so 
I mean, I guess I'm just as concerned safety wise. I don't I I can imagine in my head a dozen restaurants and, and stores that have opaque doors and people don't often get injured from that. So I think it's just a matter of whether or not this is open to a patio and something where people are constantly going in and out that might lead, you know, even your employees carrying, um, I don't know if this is uh, food is going to be served out here or drinks, but um, people going in and out might want some transparency for more like a functional capacity of carrying a tray of glasses and not getting knocked over or things like that. So that that's, that's management that's on your side. So I'd be considering that. Um, what I do love about this version is that if you illuminate this from the inside at night, you know, even 5 p.m. in the in the winter, um, it's going to look gorgeous, kind of illuminated from the street. So, so I like this as a concept, and I think you know, if you had the option to go for the you know transparent, um, one-sided transparent vinyl, um, it, it would be something to consider from a functional perspective. That's my only comment on this one. Thank you. Thank you, and Becky. Um, I, I'm fine with the, my comments were on the upper side. Oh, okay. So if we I'll wait till we get to that. around to you first there. <laughs> um, Catherine, any comments on, on this particular installation? Yes. Um, I, I really like it. And I think it's going to give a new personality to that location, uh, which is very dark, uh, and really quite uninviting. I think this is going to give a nice, uh, a nice face to um, to the company. I I sort of have this question too about having a door that you can't see through, even when you're coming in. Maybe it's just me, but you know I sort of like to know what's ahead of me, and uh, you don't obviously know until you get in there whether it's crowded, who's there, uh, which may or not may or may not be a huge uh, issue. But um, I think it's fair to at least think through whether you want to make this uh, opaque or translucent or clear. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't vote against it, on, no matter you know what your decision was on that. But I definitely think it's going to. Uh, be a great improvement to uh, any previous business there. So that would be my comment. Thanks, Catherine. Um, I'm gonna concur with my colleagues about the um, translucency of the vinyl. I think that that would be a, a great addition for all the reasons that they said. And I just have a question about the lighting of the White Lion Brewing Company sign. It's an illuminated sign. Is it lighting? Uh, only forward, say through the letters or down? What's the? Uh, Eric, a very good question. And it is, it is essentially a box and inside the box are LEDs that face in the direction of the letter. So it's it's a one way backlit, if you will. Light comes from the back and shines out the front. So it will not cast any any light backwards. It's it's solid. And, and there is, there's a, if you look to the, far left, it's kind of visible. There is this metal um, tubing that um, uh, will hold the sign. So it, it, it and because it there is this tubing, it can only shine forward. It should, and it should only shine forward. Okay, great. All right, let me see if I can manage to get to the other screen. <clears throat> nope, that's the overall square footage one. We gotta go here. There you go. Super. Um, so let's see, Becky, you had your you had a wish to comment on this one. OK, um, I think that the overall sign design is extremely attractive, but um, I I feel like it should be a similar size as the Drake. Mm -hmm. it, it, it takes away from the Drake sign um, and it just doesn't look it doesn't look balanced to me. So. I'm I would I would suggest considering reducing the size of it. Thank you. Tom, is your hand still up to talk about this one? Yeah, I think Lindsay had a comment on this as well. I don't know if I want to get in line with her, but um, my comments are the same um, in terms of scale, and and I think that there are ways to probably 
tackle that. Um, you know, scaling the whole thing down, I think it would still be legible from this distance. Um, so I, I, I would just like to see it more in proportion with the sun, with the Drake sign, merely from a building aesthetic perspective. Um, I actually really love the sign. I love your graphics, um, but I think that would be something that I'd like to change. I think the other comment I have is really about the green on the light green and at that distance and at that scale, I have a question about legibility. I mean, maybe that's an opportunity to go to white there or some other some other variation of color, but that contrast seems um, really challenging even on my, my um, high res Mac laptop screen at, I don't know, three feet. <laughs> um, so I can imagine that, um, at that scale, uh, and, you know, in certain kind of light, that would be a real challenge to see, um, especially for people who have um, um, <clears throat> issues with their eyes and contrast in terms of legibility. So making sure that these, <clears throat> there's some accessibility issues that might be dealt with with that. So I'd explore some color variations if I were you, um, but I'd really like the graphics overall, and I, I think it's a great package, um, but I would like to see that smaller. Um, as a whole, and I think you're going to lose some, I think the test kitchen is going to get too small to see at a distance, so that might be something you want to see somewhere else on the facade of the building rather than way up high, but that's just my thoughts on that. Um, again, I'm open to discussion with others about how to deal with that. <clears throat> Lindsay? Yeah, I think... Um... Those are my two main comments as well. So the scale, I think that it can be a different proportion from the Drake, but it should be in proportion. Um, so I think maybe choosing the same height, you know, so there's like a, a common datum of bottom and top of the sign, but it could be wider than the Drake, mm -hmm. which it looks like it, it would be if you shrunk it down to the same vertical dimensions. Um, I also think that the sign looks great, except for the Antes Kitchen part, which feels um, very um, disconnected from the graphics of the White Line Brewing Company uh, graphics. And it um, it's both a scale and color and positioning. Um, so I would I would agree with Tom that if if I were to approach this, I would probably go with just a white font um, on the black. And I think it's fine to have it be smaller, but it does feel a little odd to have the font be kind of the uppercase, lowercase um, lettering mm -hmm. com with con in contrast to the White Line Brewing Company font. I honestly question if you need it at all. I think that it would be stronger without it, but if you really feel like you need to have that there for branding or information, um, I do think trying to make it as cohesive as possible with the White Lion Brewing Company font and signage and centering it, making it um, as, as easy to read as possible would be a recommendation, a strong recommendation. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I think it looks great. Thank you for those. Chris, I saw that your hand was up a moment ago. Did you want to? Yeah, I would just uh, like Harry to explain the um, dimensions. I took a look at them, but it was late this afternoon and I was kind of tired. So I didn't really understand exactly what um, the dimensions mean. And I think what he needs to do is show you that all of this signage is going to be 10% or less of the... Um, facade the overall building facade that was a question that that i had um but it, we do have we have the we have the dimensions here to take a look at so um if i could put a pin in that just for a moment and ask catherine if she has any comments about this sign and then we can address the overall square sure image. yeah uh i'm in total agreement with everything that everybody has said and that test kitchen i mean if you do uh shrink the size of the sign as we see it here. Uh, so maybe it's been mentioned that uh, 
even if you put it in white letters, it may not stand out enough to anybody can pick it up from the street, but I definitely feel we have to go. It has to be in proportion to the sign signage for the Drake and mm -hmm. that test kitchen uh, issue uh, definitely should be, I think, in white if, if you uh, decide to keep it at all. Those are my comments. Great, thank you. <clears throat> um, all right. Harry, we you were kind enough to share with us. We have dimensions on this sign, which I think if we do the math, turns out to about 51 and a half square feet, but it, we're suggesting that it becomes smaller. Yes, and first of all, I want to thank you all for, for your comments. It's going to make a lot of sense, especially when it comes to Test Kitchen and, and turning it to right um, and make it more visible. And I would leave it up to Ray and uh, TSM to decide uh, colors and positioning and um, you know this overall scale to the sign itself I, I think these are very valuable comments and certainly I understand it and uh, um, so uh, in terms of square footage but yes it, yeah. this is um, well there's a frame that is around the entire banner that is five inches on all sides so you did the square footage um we did not include the frame and i'm just double checking as we speak here um uh actually um i did include it the frame is included but um mm -hmm. so that's 46 square feet and where i need the drb's assistance is in terms of what is allowed what's you know that's 10 percent but um um and is that 10 percent of the entire facade uh second floor first floor or um I, I we need direction on on how to approach that uh for the signs it's a great it's a great question it does say of the building but you're adding to signage that's already there um, right that is that is correct and I, I mean i know the square footage is going to go down and I, I believe it was, um, I, I think it was Catherine or it might have been Lindsay uh, understanding that when we reduce it, it the, if the height is equal to the drag because of the way the layout, it, the width is certainly going to be bigger. Uh, it's going to be wider. Yeah. Um, and then we we also need to take into consideration the negative space around the the graphics, which is taken up by the the molding uh, that covers the springs. And I would ask respectfully if the board would consider, you know, allowing really what is visible, um, the white lion, uh, to be um, considered uh, in place of the white lion and the molding, because that molding adds again ten inches left right top bottom so that that's a lot of square footage um and again i will defer to ray uh in terms of test kitchen because if that stays it certainly takes up space if it doesn't it, we we find some more space or but it, it, that's ray and tsm i, I defer to, to him okay. well i think the bylaw suggests that any fixed hardware that's part of the surface of the sign is part of your square footage. So I would argue that the kind of full extents of the dimensions should count. Right now, that would mean 94 inches by 79, 79. inches. Yep. We know so, I mean, it's get a little smaller. Yep. Um, and then I'm wondering what the board thinks about kind of not counting the upper portion of the drake and just looking at these kind of three volumes one the, the the shared upper surface of the building and then the whole extents of this lower floor which will be kind of white lion's domain is the square footage and then limiting to 10 percent i think would get us to only 81 square feet total which is not enough um actually erica First of all, great. Mm -hmm. I, I did the same counting and I got I, I got 81 as well. Yeah. Um and uh if you round up. I'll take it. We'll take it. Um we know the wall sign is going to shrink. 
yeah. what it shrinks to is is I, I don't know right now but uh looking at the drake as an example their the, the wall sign was roughly 23 square feet so you know let's say we're i'm just throwing it out there 35 square yeah, you're right we don't make it it's the uh the the, the soffit and the wall would yeah i'm sorry yeah. I, i'm i'm sorry i'm flipping around i keep losing that one uh this ground floor piece here yep um, so the white lion brewing company the the illuminated box sign is uh as you can see is 21 square feet um the graphics behind it on the door is roughly 60 square feet if you you know include all the glass you know, all the glass let's just put it that way and then mm -hmm. Um, and then the wall sign we know is going to come down, I, I would guess, at least by 15 square feet, if not more, you know, uh, if the far wall, if the Drake is 23 square feet, um, just for the sake of discussion and the, and the white lion becomes 35 square feet, um, we're still over. Mm. Unless we have a way of creatively thinking about that vinyl um, well <laughs> yes yeah, that was um, going to be my comment i sorry to interrupt harry and ray like if if you did go with like a more cut vinyl version right um you could imagine that filling out the left four square or four um i guess blocks right which would save you a lot of square footage on the right because the leftover glass on the right would not count and you could scale that down a bit and might not have to fill that whole thing. You might get the nose in there in the door, but the negative space would not be, you know, frosted. The negative space would not be signage, right? So if you were smart in how you calculated a cut vinyl, it mm -hmm. would not take up as much square footage that way. And you could still get this nice um, you know, effect. You'd also have some of the transparency, I think, that people were talking about here. So anyway, it might be something to consider um, going with a, either a, the, the, the white being just printed on a clear vinyl so you can get that fade in there, or if you do like a straight up cut vinyl. But if you can get that to, to transparency, I don't think it would necessarily count as signage, right? It would just be transparent glass. So you can futz with your math that way um, and still get the effect if you were creative with how you treat that. So, Tom, if, if I may, and, and Ray, please jump in if, uh, sure. if going in, what, what you're, if, if we do cut vinyl, wherever there is white that becomes cut vinyl and there's no, no translucent or opaque uh, behind it, um, do, are you, is that left window, is it still scaled out, you know, height times, times width, and even though it's not completely filled, or am I basically adding up what is the white on the, on the, on the glass? I mean, how, do, how is that viewed by the board? I think, um, I can't really draw on a PDF, but the, we would kind of take the extents of that text. Yep. And, consider that the square footage not the square footage of the white itself but if you boxed it out yes okay right. it makes the math a little easier but um yep yeah it's definitely would be oh there who did that that's great <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice job was that right yeah. no that was tom i think i think it was tom yeah. That's the graphic artist right there. That's awesome. <laughs> nice, nice job. So I, I see what you're doing, Tom. That if we box out the image wherever it might fall, we could we you know that 60 square feet, we could cut that down significantly. Oh, Tom's muted. All right, I'm Wait. muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that would have to be transparent in order for it to. I think not count as signage correct yeah that's yeah. my understanding tom well put absolutely and and ray you, you would work with tsm and and oh I mean, absolutely well, i know and actually actually i think it improves it it definitely improves the optic and it and it speaks to some of the concerns that the that the board has so i i love the the ability to have the vector peeking out to the cityscape and then have 
uh, your regular um, non frosted glass looking back into the seating space of the uh, taproom and brewery. Great. Um, I would love to hear from some other members of the board on this. Does anybody want to share a thought? <laughs> Lindsay? Excuse me. Um, now that we're talking about this, I hadn't realized that the nose of the lion was cut off. And I do feel like if there's a way to scale it just enough that mm -hmm. you can see that kind of front profile, I think that would be a great um, change. And yeah, I, I think, you know, it sounds like we're kind of narrowing in on on what makes sense but i i feel i feel great about kind of the direction this is headed um and i i do feel like the going back to the other side um if if it's possible to hold that kind of top and bottom edge even with the the surround the frame um as close to the drakes as possible or even just aligning the top or the bottom. I mean, I think having some kind of relationship there vertically would be really strong um, and help the cohesiveness of that whole um, that whole building uh, facade. And so, yeah, if 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 eliminating that test kitchen allows you to kind of shrink it, kind of like pull the frame in a bit, then you could really kind of expand the whole thing um, to fit that kind of top and bottom edge. With respect to the Drake uh, sign, so I think you have some some options to work with there, and I think having it be wider, like you clearly have a space. So I don't have. I, I'd be curious to hear other people's thoughts, but I don't think that there's any. Um, I think just having that kind of relationship vertically would would give the effect that's needed, and I think having it be wider wouldn't wouldn't be a problem to my eyes. Mm -hmm. Catherine. Yeah. Uh, I agree with just what Lindsay said. Uh, I think we should really strongly endorse keeping the uh, proportion uh, for the sign, um, both the top and bottom. And uh, it seems like that's something that can be modified um, quite easily uh, mm -hmm. because that, to me, the proportion is really important. Uh, that's all I want to say. But I agree. Thank you. And Becky, any thoughts? Are you good? No, I think that the suggestions are, are perfect. I I really like the idea of changing the, the, the lion graphics on the on the windows and doors a little bit. It's beautiful. And I think it might even end up showing up better um, if it's framed a little bit with the glass. And I completely agree about the upper sign. Um, yeah, no, no other, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to summarize where we've landed. Um, and Ray and Harry, if what I say, uh, and also members, if what I say doesn't jive with what you're thinking, let me know. Um, so our, our um, first and most strident comment is that the top and bottom of the building sign, as we'll call the one that's on the screen now, should align with the top and the bottom of the Drake oh, sign. Right. We're not as concerned about the width, but we want that top and bottom to be in alignment. Um, there also was commentary about the readability of and test kitchen. Um, one simple comment would be to test some colorways that allow for more contrast. Um, other members of the board were suggesting that you may not need it at all, but we'll leave that up to you. Um, but I do, I, I do think that for um, readability purposes, for accessibility purposes, that we want that to be visible. Um, and then looking at the uh, door sign, we have no comments at all about the the um, banner box looks great, um, but we do have thoughts about the um, the glass signs. Um, one is that if you simply 
focus on the figure of the lion and and you do that in a um, printed vinyl um, and then the text on the glass being mindful of your overall square footage um, and maybe uh, shrinking or shifting the lion a little bit so that we see the nose um, that that would be uh, our set of suggestions did I capture that for everyone perfect perfect perfect, perfect. yeah, yeah. very well done thank you yes cool. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's a beautiful package and we're really excited that you're coming to town so um this is going to be uh this is going to be great and <clears throat> does somebody want to make a motion to that effect uh that we approve with recommendations i so move that we approve with recommendations thank you and a second tom i uh, second. <laughs> resident seconder um is there any discussion at this point um, I just I just have a comment. Sure. I love the way the look that the lion is giving you. Uh, it, it just it cracks me up. It's great. Um, <laughs> it's just it's adventurous. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's really nice. All right. Well, and on that, uh, I think Catherine's hand is from a kind of. Yeah, let me take it down. I lowered my individual hand. hand. All right, so now we're voting. Um, all those in favor of approving with uh, recommendations as noted, please say aye or Catherine. Uh, aye. Aye. Great, we got everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harry and Ray. For Thank your... you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Look forward to working with everyone. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, uh, and again, to to the DRB, thank you very much. These comments were extremely helpful. And uh, if I, in terms of a procedural question, once these ch changes are made, uh, the next step would be to forward to um, Chris and to Jennifer to, for final distribution, or just you know, how does that how does that process work today? I don't think uh, that the DRB sees things a second time, do they? Excellent. Not unless the changes are substantial. I think mm -hmm. if you're minding oh. what because the building commissioner has to approve in the next understood round. okay thank you very much mm -hmm. have a nice afternoon. good luck good luck <laughs> all right take care okay now i understand that the folks from the spoke weren't able to come until six o'clock they are here they are here though okay great well we'll stick with the original agenda then <laughs> How's everybody doing? All right. I don't know why you can't see me. I don't know what what's going on. <laughs> I don't know, but your hand is up again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Why can't you see me? Why? Where am I? Why <laughs> am I not part of this group? I have I no know, option. Catherine. Why you don't have the chair anymore, not on tonight. I, I know. I feel. <laughs> All right. I just love. <laughs> Tom, that your books are arranged in rainbow sequence. That makes me really happy. Come on, look at that one. It's just Radio, beautiful. It's a work of art, yeah. and I really love it. Great. That's, that's got just, more. Got that's more. very exciting. <laughs> um. Okay. So, Chad, are you here to represent the spoke tonight? I am. Can you guys hear me? We yeah. can hear you. Can't see you, but we can hear you. Would you like me to do the screen share or would you like to share your own screen with uh, materials? I would love for you to do the screen share and I apologize to you guys. I, I appreciate you accom accommodating me. I just stepped off the baseball diamond and I'm about to go on to a basketball court, the life of uh, a coach here. And so <laughs> I'm a little bit unprepared of my documents, but I know you guys do have them there. So I, I hope that helps us all. Okay, we, we've got we've got you covered. Um, all right, so this is your... Um, application and if you want to just give us a a, a summary of what sure. you're up to and i will share the the pages here um as makes sense sure so i i think all of you were on the last design review board meeting with the building there that you see uh, approving the yeah. sign on the side and so if you guys are familiar with that part of the building i'm not sure if all of you were a part of the original design review board when we first moved into the amherst coffee space but um, what we created there was a uh, the the pub uh, version of the spoke is the other half of the building the the original space and the 
former um, Amherst sub and pizza space is what we call our pub side. And then Ooh. our other side, our new side is what we've we've always called live and that's our nightclub side. And so our intention with this uh, new move to the back building was to, to take what has been greatly successful in that smaller space and move it into a, a larger space, one that's just more manageable for us. Um, and, and as you guys all know in this town with the, the population, the student population here and the, the, the vast majority of them, um, it, it, it was a move, it, it was a move that allowed us to take that idea and be able to go to a, a larger space, recreate it, uh, and again, make it something uh, very much more manageable because we have a clean space over there. So uh, we got we get to start over from the beginning. And so um, from a, a from the design review board perspective of things, uh, we're not going to make a whole heck of a lot of changes to the building. Um, we don't need a lot of signage. Uh, again, this is sort of a, a a sister space to the to the front building, which is our main bar. Um, and this is a space that will only be open three nights a week, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Uh, I wish it was attached to our current building, but it's not. But it's conveniently next door. Uh, so we are gonna we are gonna utilize the space that we have over there, and and um, and hopefully have approval on on this nightclub over there. Great. Um, so is everybody familiar with where we're where this is the new building? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. Um, and so your would you mind summarizing for us what your the the changes to the exterior Certainly. are? Yeah, so we're going to replicate um, everything that's in the, the front building there that is relevant to the nightclub aspect live. We're going to replicate all that to the back building. So again, if you take the back building for what it is right now and um, that one there, we're not it's it's brick. It's a brick facade. It's a normal uh, roof line. We're not going to make any changes on any of that. We're going to leave the brick. Um, we're going to the, the roof will be replaced with a new roof uh, with just an architectural shingle roof. We're not doing anything uh any different changes on the roof line on that um on that dormer on the front right there that you can see in this picture that is where the signage will go uh for mm -hmm. the front of the building the only sign on the entire part of the front of that building will be on that dormer there and then we will have a uh on the side of the building we will have another sign and i believe it's in this packet that shows the signs on there regular normal size um yeah that sign that's there it's we try to keep it very clean um i mean we've been the 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 smoke has been there since 1984. Um, we took it over in 2017. We've rebranded it. Um, it is, it is caught fire. It is definitely a, a very well branded um, logo. So we don't feel as though we have to do a whole heck of a lot of stuff in the new building. I don't want to put neon signs in any of the windows. I don't want to illuminate anything. We don't need to do that. Um, I, I think for us, it's keeping it very simple, uh, using it as a in conjunction with the space that we already have. And, and keeping it kind of clean and and what you see in that upper picture there is what we want to replicate replicate in the back where it would be the windows would be tinted the sign would be black and white the two signs um and and that's pretty much from the front perspective that's pretty much it the doors would be replaced with what's there of normal um gray or white steel doors um you know again nothing in dramatic changes in the front aspect of it the additions would be two sheds in the backside, um, which I have pictured uh, in there now. Those are what we have currently at the, the spoke front building. You can see the the dumpsters uh, there, the frame of the dumpsters of the, the fence that goes around them. All of that would be replicated in the in the building in the backside as well. Okay. And the location, you said that the, the, the spoke live sign is going to go here in the, the triangle. Yeah, then, it, I so thought it was, inside? maybe we sent it after. I, I apologize if it's not here. I, one of the um, one of the stamp drawings I sent from the architect did have the signage on there and, and maybe you guys just don't have that one. Page five, it, so. Page five, thank you, Tom. Ah, there it is, oh, there it yeah. Is. So just like that, um, you know, again, I, I don't, I don't personally feel we need to do anything overkill on this building. I don't want any neons. I don't want any signage. We're not going to have any beer companies out there. Nothing like that. Very simple, very clean. Uh, it is a sister building to the existing one that we have right now. We don't really feel obligated to have to brand it or have anyone discover it. Everybody's going to know where it is. Um, and so 
for us, it's kind of keeping it very clean. And as you can see, the doors right there, um, the three doors in the front will be your normal double steel commercial grade doors. The windows in the front will have uh, tint on them. Part of the reason for the tint on there is one of the one of the things we're doing um, a, a very good job about is sound mitigation. And part of that sound mitigation is going to be we're going to replace all those windows with half inch thick laminated uh, glass windows and an additional uh, a tint vinyl covering on the front of it. Those in conjunction will take down the decibel ratings that we are required to have for sound control outside of the building. So that's part of why we're we're doing that. Okay, thank you for for that presentation. And um, we'll start with Catherine this time. <clears throat> okay, let me just see here. Uh, yeah, so essentially, you've got two little lives. You got your you got your original live, and you got this live. And I the other one's going to go away, Catherine. So I didn't mean oh, to well. interrupt you, but just so you know that that's going to we we want to take that out of that building, and we want to make oh, the, oh, the, I the this, scope puzzle this, itself bigger. Oh, okay. I misinterpreted that. So, okay. Yeah, I didn't. That's my fault. I didn't. I didn't make that clear enough. So okay. our intention, our intention, our future intention is to take the the existing front building that you guys know as the smoke yeah. and have yeah. all that yeah. be a tavern, a right. bigger tavern, yeah. sure, um, and okay. make the nightclub aspect in the backside. Right. It gives us okay. two different feels, two different offerings. Right. Um, easier to manage. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's my question. Not that it would take people very long to figure out if there were two or one. That's it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, I see Tom's hand is up as well. Tom? Um, did I have my hand up? Sure. You did. Um, I guess I left it there. I know I, I don't have any comments. Um, I'm just curious. I don't, I don't see any paint specs on here, but I'm guessing you're just going to be going with white frames around everything, um, the doors and all that sort of continuously, you know, as it is, and then getting rid of whatever's there on the facade. The side facade has awnings and things. I'm guessing those are going away um, based on what I'm seeing in the drawing. So, um, but as I mentioned last time, I like the graphics. I think they're simple and clean. Um, they're modern and they're understated intentionally. And I'm very happy about that. And um, so I have really no other comments other than to just clarify that um, the, the paint is going to stay white along these frames and the doors and the uh, awnings and such will be going away. You're exactly correct, Tom. So the um, the very minimal trim that holds the windows in place is white wood and it will remain that way. There is white as well. Um, as you can see on the bottom left corner of that picture, there's an awning that overhangs the um, that overhangs the walkway there, the entire front of that building. Uh, it is an is an overhang, and that has white wood under it as well. Um, I will be painting it white, the same color that's there. We're matching it. It's jo Jones owns Jones Properties owns the building, so you know, in conjunction with Wendy, we will do things that are that are cohesive with their other existing building. So with the brick facade, we're not touching any of that. That will not change. The roof will not, even though we are going to replace it with a, a new architectural tile uh, roof, it'll it'll match their building. So we're doing everything to work with Jones Properties as well to make sure it's remaining. Jones already, you know, as you guys probably know, the building has been sitting empty for a few years now. And so Jones has already done the, like all the awning that sticks out underneath. It's all can LED lighting. Um, the corners have nice LED downward lighting bulbs on them. The the perimeter of the building already is done for for lighting. So I don't have to make any lighting changes. It's all downward lighting. It's all illuminated nicely. And they did that, of course, for their own protection and their liability of their building while it had sat empty for a couple of years. So I don't have to make any lighting changes. Um, I don't, you know, that's the nice thing with this building. I don't have to make a whole heck of a lot of exterior changes. Great. Lindsay? Yeah, I agree that the, the signage looks great. It's really clean. Um, I like that it fits, you know, over that door in a way that, that works with the existing openings. My only real question is on the doors and um, it, I think, I don't know if you said it, but it reads that you are planning to not have any glass on the doors. And I'm curious about that decision. Uh, sound mitigation, you're correct. They are going to be steel, uh, solid core doors. We need to do that because the the point of penetration of, of sound is doors and windows in that building only. So that building is brick sided, cinder block, and then we're going to have wall framing inside. So that uh, creates a 16 inch thick 
wall. Uh, and so that right there is considered soundproof. So our only points of contact of sound mitigation are windows and doors. And the window aspect of it is a little easier to solve uh, just because they're fixed points and they don't open and close. But they're not, but glass is in it, glass has more sound penetration than a solid core. And that's why uh, during our sound analysis, we've decided to go with solid doors for that purpose. The, the window tints, I know in the white line discussion you guys had, one of the questions was, can you see out of them? The window tints, absolutely you can. Every window has, um, it's, it's darker on one side and lighter on the inside. So when you're on the inside of the building, you can completely see outside just as it would be normal in, a, in an automobile. Um, and it's just darker from the outside looking in. Uh, but the, at the points of the doors, they are solid for that purpose that that's the only way that we can make sound mitigation without uh, making them thicker or adding, um, you know, if we if we added, uh, I suppose, vinyl to it, we, we could get to that point. But a solid core um, commercial grade door without windows already meets the decibel requirements that we need to, to meet at the, um, the mark. We have to be at 70 decibels or less at the uh, at the perimeter of the of the of the line and from the front of that building to our our perimeter is like 12 feet. So it's we really got to do our best job to make sure that we're, we're actually trying to do a trying to get a decibel reduction down to 60 decibels right at the face of the exterior of that building and the windows and doors are the parts that make that possible. So uh, that's that's understandable, and we appreciate you doing that. Um, I guess just from an aesthetic standpoint, um, you know, are these doors going to be white? Yeah, they. So commercial grade doors generally come in white or gray. Uh, white is my is my my choice. Cur currently, there are two solid doors there: the one in the middle and the one to the right, which used to be Old Town Tavern. Those do have solid core doors in place. Um, the one that was the laundromat does have a glass door at it right now. So the changes would be made for all three of those to be the exact same doors, same look, same everything of, of, of the new ones that we replace with white. I'm open minded to other colors, but as the the trim of the building and, and, um, and the awning underneath it, that's all white. I My personal opinion is that, that a white commercial grade door would would fit in the, the best there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. All of that makes sense. I think it's just a matter of maintenance um, and just as a recommendation, given that I'm sure there's going to be lots of people going in and out, which is a great thing for you, um, just to try to try to do your best to keep those updated. I don't know if it's just a matter of paint, painting it every so often, but um, I can imagine that those will get a lot of wear and tear. Yeah, those three doors are exit only. So the design of this, the layout of the floor plan is that the side door uh, becomes the main entrance. That side door, that little one that's in the bottom left corner there under the other side, that 44 inch door, that is an entrance only point. That is where our queuing will start for our line. And then um, those three front doors are exit only. Again, this is a building that'll be open only Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays. Um, and we open at 8 p.m. and close at 1. And those three front doors, once somebody exits that building, if they want to get back in, they have to go back to the front door to get in. There's no entrance point at any one of those three doors. So that'll help a lot in what you're referring to. And I do agree with you. They will take a lot of wear and tear if we did it the other way around. The uh, location yes. where you have to the right, the infilling um, of, the, of the glass window to the right of the entrance, it could be interesting. Too. That's not, I don't know why that's there. That's not supposed to be like okay. that. That's an error in the, in the print. I actually never picked up on it until you just mentioned, mentioned that I was actually looking at when you said that that's a window. That is a glass window. It's part of the replacement. Amherst glass is doing the windows for us. Um, so that is actually going to be a normal window uh, tinted just like to match everything else. Great. If it wasn't, I was going to say it could be an interesting idea to do some kind of art installation or mural. Um, art project there but sounds like that's not the direction it's headed so um I I, yeah. I see that there's some hands up but I do I given what you just said Chad I I do respect that you said you don't want to have a lot of signage additional bits and pieces of signage and neons and things like that but I wonder if there is a way to perhaps um put the hours on the door uh some small signage that indicates that this is the front door um oh there, I yeah suppose, i agree i yeah. suppose the queue will indicate it but um for those who aren't in the know um, yeah 
things like that. Yeah, I agree. That that is something we would certainly the door itself will certainly have the hours on it. Um, it but yes, I I understand where you're coming from with that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm looking for who has not weighed in yet on this. Tom, did you have an ad? Catherine, do you have a, something to add as well? Uh, I was just going to add that I think that the way the building is oriented and how it's, you know, kind of wants to feature that main entrance on the, the long side, I do think that some kind of wayfinding would be helpful and, and it could be a little arrow, you know, entrance that way kind of thing. We've talked to a few different people about where they might have confusing architectural entrances. Um, some kind of special light that's there, a blue light, some other thing that makes it cool and special. Um, but I, I think that um, you do want to try to find a way to direct people to that. And I, I think you're right that they'll eventually find that and that's where the queue will be and it'll make a lot of sense. But um, you have this whole other side of the building where people might keep trying to get in and it might just be helpful to put little, some kind of signage like main entrance around the side or, or something like that. Just to, I don't think it, I don't think you need it. I think it would be polite to do it to some people who might be confused. Um, just my thoughts on that. Yeah. Delivery folks, whatever, you know. Um, Catherine? Yeah, I, I just, uh, I dr I've i driven by the spoke uh, numerous times at night and I see the lines, uh, which, then prompted me to think, is there an overhang uh, around that building? So when people are waiting outside in the slush and the rain, which they will, I- Or uh, here on the fly. Yeah, is there any way they can sort of have a shelter, uh, protection overhead? Um, I don't think that building looks that way, but- There is a, so the entire front of that building is, uh, so we have a 72 inch um, walkway there with wise of the walkway and- Oh, good. Yeah, the entire sure. width of it is covered by a, a, a cover. Yeah, which oh, is great yeah. because I would, small that's a great small. benefit that we have in that building that, you know, was sort of built into the original design and thank God, because I, it, it's a tremendous benefit. Yes. Yes. I agree. Oh, great. Okay. I'm glad I asked. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's a private walkway too. And it's ra It's actually, it's, it's a little deceiving in this picture because it is raised up. I, if, if any of you are familiar with the building, it is it is raised up uh, above the. There's parking right in front of it, and it's raised up above the parking about eight inches. And it, uh -huh. at some points of it, it has an additional, uh, you know, um, retaining wall aspect, if I can call it that, uh, down it as well. So it's not the, the other benefit of the design of it is it's not really conducive to anybody just walking up to it at any point. It actually the way it's designed, it really does push everybody to that right side and. Um, as you guys probably know, what's going on behind and around it is the new development of that building. And so to the right of my building is going to be a vacant lot that they're going to fence in and, and our walkway is going to be right there. And both my sidewalks come down on an egress at that point to, to zero so that it's fully handicap accessible. And so the flow of that area, if you saw this actually standing in front of it, does push everything to the right to that entrance point naturally. Great. Um, Chad, my question is, uh, what is the paint color of the clabbered behind the the light? It's white. It's white. Okay. It's the same so. white that the trim that's on the trim uh, that Jones uses for all their stuff. It's the same all there. Okay. I, I, I wish I had a picture of it for you guys, but it is it matches everything around the trim. We're not going to change that. It would, you know, when we, we are going to freshen up the paint on those, on those parts of the, the trim pieces, and that'll be done as well to match everything. So. All right. So, um, DRB members, I think the only, there were a lot of questions, but the only suggestion is um, that Chad might want to consider actually adding some small amount of signage to signal wayfinding and front entrance. Uh, but beyond that, we had no suggestions, and we just need a motion to approve. I move that we approve the, this uh, uh, petition with the thought that wayfinding signs might be considered. <laughs> a second. Who said? Who seconded? Um, Tom seconds. Um, is there any discussion? Tom, your hand is still up. Is that a? 
Okay, Catherine, did you have a, your hand no, up? No, no, I'm just okay. pulling well, with my hand. <laughs> in, in that case, all those who are in favor of approving the spoke uh, application, please say aye. 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 Great, that's everyone. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Have a great evening. All right, moving right along. Um, I think that next on the agenda is to approve meeting minutes. Uh, we have Maureen has left us with uh, minutes from December 12th. Um, and I can share those. Did anybody have a chance to read them? Does anybody have comments? I was not present for that meeting, so I'm recusing myself from response. No. Um, I have, I do have a, a comment, um, and that is that we, we, Discussed. Um, um, we we had a conversation. Um, oh, this is the wrong document. Sorry. Where are the minutes? There, they are here. No. Ha. Huh. Minutes. We had a conversation with um, the gentleman from. No, oh, that's still the agenda. Sorry, that's my homework. I can't find the minutes. Let me stop sharing. We had a conversation with the um, gentleman from the um, restaurant behind the alley. <laughs> Boltwood. Oriental flavor? No, no, no. no. Um, the oh, the chicken. the chicken one. Yes, and um, in Maureen's notes, she she rightly notes that he he wasn't present, but then he did come, and the conversation shifted, and that's not reflected in the minutes. And so I think that I'm not ready to approve them, um, as as written. You would like to have us make that change and then resubmit them? Yes. I I feel that that's important because we did have an actual conversation with him. And right now it says he wasn't there to be a part of yeah. that. So was he that. not there at the start? I mean, because right. I, I, remember, I remember that he wasn't there at a certain yeah. moment. And then we started talking about it and then he came over. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't have the, there's no time noted for when that happened, but he definitely was there for the second half to receive our comments. Yes. Um, and does anybody else have any other suggestions, edits to make at this point? And we could table it and come back to this one at the next meeting. Okay. Catherine, your hand is up. And now it's not. Okay, great. So if it's okay, we'll just set this one aside and, and oh, now it's up again. We'll come back to the meeting minutes and approve them at the following meeting. Yeah? That sounds okay. good. Great. Um, next on the agenda is um, a general public comment period. Is anybody present from the, from the public in the audience? Jennifer, do you see any additional folks in the audience now? Okay. No, I don't. Okay. Well, moving right along. Um, I think unless anybody has any other agenda items, I'd like to close with the discussion about establishing a monthly date and time that we could always dispense with if there's nobody in the queue, um, but then we'd have something on the calendar. And I just, I know the doodling and the, the sorting out, it takes a lot of staff time. And I think that if we could streamline um, our meeting planning, that would be fantastic. Um, so a first question is, does this time uh, work for everybody? And could we establish a, 
a week of the month where we would all just hold mm -hmm. this date. <clears throat> I like I think it's, Yeah, it's a good suggestion. We talked about it before, but we could never get ourselves to think about it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. So where are we? This is the last week of the month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that would give, you know, four weeks for things to queue up. I suppose if somebody had an emergent situation that we could call a meeting if necessary, but it also might be nice to signal to applicants that we meet once a month. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Plan on that. Yeah. 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 And I think that's why we didn't settle on something because there was always this emergency thing coming up. And yeah, we were just more organized about that. You know, they'd know to come. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So last Monday of the month at 5 p.m., does that work for everybody? Yeah. Um, and yes. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer not the same week as planning board. It just seems okay. to it, so planning and Chris, planning board second and fourth. First and third. First and third. Oh, it's <laughs> February. Is that why we're in the? No, this planning, is the planning board is first and third. Um, okay. they're going to be then tomorrow. The yeah. Yes, yeah. the fourth week would be fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm I do I, this week, so I'm confused. Enormous respect yeah. for the number of meetings that you have to attend. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, Chris and Jennifer, does that work on the staff side of things to, to meet on Monday evenings? Generally That's speaking, yes. Every once in a while, I need to go to the town council and they meet mm -hmm. on Monday uh, Mondays, but I'm hoping that we'll get another staff person who will be able to um, help you and yes. that therefore I will be able to go to the town council meetings, which I think I'd rather be here at this <laughs> meeting rather than town council. Um, and as for yeah. me, I again, I don't know how long I'll be, you know, filling this role, but Mondays are fine. In general, they're actually the best. And it's also really great to know that because I'm the person who deals with the applicants, you know, at their first uh, interaction. So it's going to be great mm -hmm. to be able to tell people when the meeting is instead yes. of having, and it's also going to be great for me because we end up sort of losing track of applications because they're just sort of floating around in space. Mm -hmm. And um, we already have a couple that we, would be able to now schedule and tell the people. And I think that would put them at ease as well. Great. So they Thank don't you. have to wonder, you know, how long do I have to wait? You know, why am I not right. important enough to have a meeting for? I have to wait till four other people apply or, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that would also be really great. Uh -huh. So thank you for agreeing to that. I am noticing that there are some months where we there are five Mondays. So do we want to do it the last Monday of the month or every fourth Monday? Yeah. Wait, question. Yes, May. Every fourth Monday. So that fourth we Monday. Have the backup. Okay. Okay. Good. And I, I'm realizing why my, I'm confused because the fourth Monday today on Wednesdays are the first. So right. Wednesday is the months. first of March. So yeah. my brain was, yeah. yeah. It's a weird month. February <laughs> misses up. Yeah. It's also somehow the longest yeah. month, even though it's the shortest. Yes. So, yeah. so, right. so sorry, did you it. decide that yeah. it was the fourth Monday or the last Monday? The fourth. fourth. Okay, perfect. The fourth. Okay. okay. Thank you. Fourth Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Marvelous. Lovely. That's helpful. Okay. Um, okay. um, I think that's it. I think it would also be helpful to have, depending on how that this works with staffing, but to be able to have um, shorter meetings. I mean, not to say that this was too long at all, just that like not having to wait for four other applicants or whatever number is the magic number mm -hmm. might in some ways make the meetings more efficient. It does. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Agreed. You're all Thank fantastic. You. Motion to adjourn. Uh -huh. So move. So move. Second. <laughs>
Okay. Have a lovely Thank evening. You. We'll right. see you in a month. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Okay. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. And thank you, Jennifer.